the allure to seek greener pastures abroad is taking shape in this country and this far we've seen mass exodus of Kenyans, especially the youth, going abroad to look for uh, better pastures. The question is, are there really greener pastures on the other side of the globe? And what is orchestrating this mass exodus? We're going to answer that particular question today on Business Glide. Your go-to point on matters uh, business public policy and economics at large, hosted by yours truly, Richard Mwenja. Indeed, always a pleasure to have you on board. And now to help me unpack this conversation is Kenya's most sought after political analyst and renowned public scholar, this side of the Sahara, Aman Bon Manura. Great to see you, sir. Thank you, Richard. Looking sharp. Thank you, Richard. Very well. Thank you. All right, sir. So, uh, today we're talking matters, uh, the massive uh, outflow. Of, of human capital from Kenya and particularly the youth who are educated but are seeking or job opportunities outside uh, the Kenyan borders or even those who are employed they are looking for better jobs outside there and you want to understand what is the odds of this problem if I should call it that way but even to start us off you've seen the green card lottery is uh, actually around the space and many Kenyans this have applied for it and there are many other opportunities that are going to avail themselves for Kenyans to try and they're going to be there if if the pattern this far is anything to go by but what could orchestrate this massive uh, desire and urge to just go outside the Kenyan borders and try life there? There are many reasons why people go out. <laughs> In the olden days, we talked of brain drain, which was educated men and women in Africa, talk about Kenya, left for greener pastures. Either because we, we paid them poorly, we didn't appreciate them, or because we didn't even employ them. You know, even as I speak to you today, mm -hmm. there are thousands of doctors trained on public money who have no jobs, who are outside this country and who are in this country without jobs. Mm -hmm. So that's the first category of people who would go out under what we call brain drain. Mm -hmm. uh, then there are also people who go because of arrangements. You know, you work for a, ca a company here is a parent company headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia, Coca-Cola. You could go under those kind of arrangements. Mm -hmm. But then the majority of those people who go are going for jobs that are not quite skilled jobs. You know, even if they are trained, not just very basic training. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where you find this green card uh, lottery. lottery. Mm -hmm. And a few people who sneak to America under all sorts of games they play. Mm -hmm. These are people who mainly dream that america is a land of plenty land of dreams yeah when they go there they realize my god mm -hmm. and i've told people let us say for you to survive in america not not to live to survive which means you can only get food not thriving yeah no surviving just surviving i, I have to pronounce it mm -hmm. today then there's tomorrow for you then when you are in tomorrow, you are looking for it. There is nothing like a month away, a day at a time, to survive food, shelter, some little transport if necessary. Supposing for you to survive in America, you need 10 units of effort. Mm -hmm. 10 units of effort. 10 kilos of strength. Just 10 for you to survive in America. If you used 3 of those 10 in Kenya here, you'll be a millionaire. So um, I'm trying to say, many people go outside the country out of ignorance. Many people still think Amzungu is a, is a god. Uh, they don't know that uh, with little effort, you can really work well. Okay. I teach at the university. Mm -hmm. Over the years, I've seen a handful, a couple of my colleagues who have gone to America and elsewhere. When I look at the package, I ask someone, is this, is, what are you taking to America, this? Someone wants to go and give you 400,000 in America because me, I'm earning 100,000 here. I cannot go. Because I have also gotten offers to go out when I was young. <laughs> and I reckon, let's say it is today. I would rather have my little money I'm earning 300 or whatever in, in Kenya than go and earn 2 million in America. So for today, if somebody were to take me to America now, uh -huh. now, the minimum? The minimum they should pay me is $50,000. A minimum of about 6 million Kenya shillings. Yeah. 
Six to seven million. I can't do anything unless I can't. You can't. I cannot do. Why? But often times they the go. The guys who go and work for four thousand dollars, three thousand dollars. How? Educated people. How can I leave Kenya to go and work in terrible countries with terrible winter and away from home for four thousand dollars? I cannot. So many people go out of ignorance, especially those who are not educated. When they go there, they find it is really tough. They may not tell you, but life outside there is really, really tough. Because, you know, when you are a Kenyan, you learn things when you go to Australia or America or UK. When you are sick and you don't have an insurance, you'll die. On the streets? Yes. At the collapse of the Berlin Wall around that time, in Romania, for example, when Ceausescu and the wife were executed by firing squad, mm -hmm. there were celebrations in the streets that free at last we are free. I heard one woman say she can now eat cheese. Finally. They can now import cheese. Because what had Romania done? Mm -hmm. Romania had said we are self-reliant. If we have anybody's debt, we are paying off it. We want to remain ourselves. That would mean standards of life may not be as glorious as they would be, but for a handful of people. Mm -hmm. So after this, not just Romania, many of the former countries in the, in the, in the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. when it, they broke off after the collapse of the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. they were very happy. Many people were happy. But you know what? Within two, three months, they were receiving shock of their life. Shocks. Capitalism had already set in. So in America, if you are sick, you'll die. There isn't a place you can go for help. Or sleeping at You time. must have your medical insurance. Or your money in the pocket. You are in Kenya here, you are sick, you go to this, we call useless government hospitals. You go to Pumani hospitals. You think they are not there, those places. You, you beg Kidogo, you tell him, hey, 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 Mutu anakuja wa anko, I'm no, I'm, I'm. Mutu wetu Eldore. Hey, anko, sijui nini, auntie, sijui, we give money or they, we, we get money. There's nothing like that. In America, it is you, your God, and your money. You, your God, and your money. Then family. Then, money comes first, God next, then family. No, people but, don't know these things. You know here, you, you, you get an accident and people rush to help you. Yeah. You are, you know, there's, there's no, the social life, the social connections there, they are not there. Mm -hmm. You're just you alone. Mm -hmm. And for you to get a decent job, without decent training, decent education, it's not easy. So you, that's why, mm -hmm. that's why people stay in America 10 years without coming. You know, they can't even make the ticket. Way, way back home. If you are a Luo and a Luya, where, where, where burying a parent is such a crucial thing, and you are not a Kikuyu, a Kikuyu can understand, they can bury your mother when you are out. It's, it's almost normal. But if you are a Luya and you have not come to bury your father, there's something wrong. It is just fair, you can't afford a ticket. And many of the people you see coming from America, and this is a fact, ask them if they can be honest with you. They book a ticket almost a year before. The f cheapest flights. They Which can keep you in an airport as you wait to connect hours on end. Because there is no direct flight you can afford. And you can't book today to travel tomorrow. So your father will not remain in the mortuary for a year as you look for a cheap ticket. So life is difficult, but people don't. But now let us, you ask me why. Mm -hmm. Apart from the ignorance and thinking the other countries are good. Land of honey and milk. Land of honey, which is there's no canon. Mm -hmm. There's also the, the objective reality. The objective reality that there are no jobs here. Our economies are doing so badly. Mm -hmm. So that even if you earn, government has taken taxes and your salary is dog. What remains, you can barely survive. So the temptation to leave your job to look for another one is there and it's justified. And if you have been around for 10 years and you have not had a job, who would blame you for going to Australia if you get a chance? Can somebody blame you? Or apply for a green card? Yeah. Very well then. But aside from those who are going there directly for employment opportunities, we've also seen many go there under the banner of you're going to seek uh, to further our education, yes. uh, postgraduate, yes. undergraduate, you yes. name it. But 
does that somewhat speak to a failed education system in Kenya whereby its quality is quite much compromised that I see I'll get much better value doing a master's in the United States of America than doing it at the University of Nairobi? Yes and no. Uh -huh. Yes, because uh, our facilities are still wanting. Uh -huh. Even if you are doing engineering at the University of Nairobi, the machinery, the, the, the machines you are doing for learning are obsolete machines. Our libraries are not well stocked. Our digital platforms for, for educational purposes are a little weak or they are not even there. So it is possible that you can go out because you can get a better quality education. Return for your money investment and education. Yeah, but the answer, the, 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 but the reality is <laughs> a number of those who go don't even meet the qualification to be in the Kenyan universities. So how can they say they are going for better education you dare when say they that? can't even qualify for this one? So, so that's not true. Mm -hmm. that, will, that will be the case if our top students, instead of wanting to do medicine at the University of Nairobi, they wanted to go out, which is not the case. They are all here. Mm -hmm. A students. So the people are going as C students. Mm -hmm. These students. So they cannot claim that that education is better than ours. They can't. And again, mm -hmm. it's quite unlikely that a guy going to America for studies will go to Harvard. Or London School of Economics? Yeah. They can't go to those Ivy League universities. Backwater so colleges? You they see? can't. They just go to normal colleges that are worse than the University of Nairobi, most of them. So that issue of better education, it doesn't sell. It doesn't sell. No. Unless you are going under specialized arrangement, you work with Camry, you work with the university, and they want to send you for, you know, exchange programs or sandwich or go and do your PhD sponsored by the university. But that's different. That's but the people different. who take themselves, they're just going to Backstreet universities in Australia and, uh, and India and everywhere. India has top universities. We are going to go to India. We are going to India. India has universities, state universities in India. India. University of Nairobi can go in Punjab or New Delhi or where? hundred times. You can't compare. It's no comparison. But the people got these village things called like back at streets. USA. Yeah. So, so yes, people go for, for reasons. Mm -hmm. But uh, a majority of people de definitely, uh, d again, operate from ignorance. Very well. Mm -hmm. Moving on swiftly, sir. Even amid this mass, mass exodus of people flooding uh, foreign nations looking for greener pastures, you've also seen many being manipulated and extorted. Uh, case in point, you've seen the Finland, Canada scandal. Very recently, there's an expose, a real one, showing Kenyans in Canada living uh, in tents because the rogue agencies took them there, manipulated them, and uh, made away with their money. Would you then say that if, as much as they are desperate and they are looking for opportunities, the best we can do as a government is just to protect them from uh, unscrupulous agencies and all those who try to just rip off from their desperation. We live in a capitalistic world. <laughs> and people have all means and ways of making money. Some of these means are so legal you can't attack them. If somebody establishes a company, an agency, I'm about to start mine perhaps, a consultants mm -hmm. to guide people who want to come and study in Kenya mm -hmm. and Kenyans who want to go and study under very good arrangements. Mm -hmm. No, this flooding. I'm just saying, I had a meeting this morning with a guy who's thinking we can do it. So people start and they have all the requisite documentation in terms of permits and licenses mm -hmm. and approvals. But then the real story is different. So you cannot blame government in some instances. You get it? Mm -hmm. There are people, I, 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 a, a couple of days ago, some people bought me a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. And they told me, Manuana, today we want to call you out. I say, why? You are saying Australia, our children are going there to drink, to yeah. do what? Two of my boys have gone there. They had looked for me. I said, oh, so then I'm wrong. But So tell me your story. It's a good thing. I told him that's just one out of a hundred. The truth is, and I maintain it, there are students who are given papers to go to Australia and other places. Mm -hmm. When you land there, you go to a university. There was even a documentary. And I'm not basing myself on that documentary because I know the truth. Mm -hmm. When you go to that university, not even a university, they tell you, we, we are giving you documents for you to, to hustle in, in Australia. So long as we say you are our student, then you are free to hustle. A majority of the students in Australia are doing are under that kind of program. 
So you can even continue getting money from 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 from, the from parents. your parents. <laughs> India was the same. Many students who went to India never went to class. After Harambe, they were village. captured by, by 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 crooks there, Nigerian crooks and Tanzanian crooks, especially turned girls into prostitution, turned men into 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 drugs. So once you are hooked, you depend on them for the supply of drugs, and you keep asking for money from home. When you exit India, they make an arrangement for you to get a, a backstreet certificate. That's why the, the civil servant, and I've written about it, the civil servant was greatly affected by these India gradu Indian graduates. They never went to class. But when they came back, because for you to take your son to India, you must be somebody. Um, and most people who are a somebody in this country are a top public servants. They are top civil servants or they are connected. So once that, that useless fellow, from, and let me call him useless, because he never even stepped in class. Once he comes, he learns today and he has a letter tomorrow to work in the civil service. So the Indian graduates spoil the civil service. You would go to somebody's office, you think he wants a, dri a bribe. But then you realize this guy does not even know this is his left hand and this is right. He's that ignorant. So the civil service has paid his price. And I can see the same thing replaying itself today. A majority of the people who are taking people to Canada and Australia are people who are influential in society or are connected to influential people. When this flood comes back, they are the ones who are going to get the few jobs in, in public service. Why the hard-working boys from the University of Nairobi, from Maseno, from Kerugoya University would not get those jobs. So we are going to start another round of filling public service positions with these people who went to do drugs and, and, and drink in Australia and Canada and elsewhere. It was there with India. We are repeating it again. And that's now to answer your question. The government can step in. Government can step in in two ways. Mm -hmm. One, offer serious public information. Let people know how the world works today. Through career arrangements in schools. Because a career teacher in a school is just a job group. He doesn't know anything, she doesn't know anything. Let them arrange to help people to speak to children when they're in school, when they're at the university and the other college. They know how the world works. Mm -hmm. So government can offer information about studies elsewhere. Number two, government should improve the quality of education to make it much more attractive. Mm -hmm. Because today, if your daughter is in a university, most, JK, whatever, mm -hmm. You go and see where children are staying. Because most universities now, you only get accommodation when you are first year. After that, Samba and Yanjani. If you look at the conditions under which university students are staying, you can't stay there and be a student. Despicable. You can't. So government should open its eyes. Instead of doing populist things, <laughs> government is doing populist things. What government should do is to study the situation thoroughly and ask itself, can a student study under these conditions and be, and be a student, or a university student? To be a university student means you are engaged full-time in the serious business of knowledge. Si utaanda kutata sukuma sangapi kwa hostel upike, mana unasaila unaanda kutangeta sukuma unakumuka kumbe unga mutu alipita hapa kachukua. You can't read. So government must make conditions good for our universities and colleges. Sure. That way you, re you reduce the temptation for people to say they are going out. Mm -hmm. Secondly, and this can only work if somebody like Manuela is president. Mm -hmm. Under my presidency, if I'm president, we will improve public education. Public education? Mm -hmm. Public education will be so good that you cannot take your child to the so-called academies. The academies will die a natural death. Can give me primary school. You, you will not believe it if I'm president. Because the money is there. Now, once public education has been made attractive and good, mm -hmm. quality education, I'll soon move into the next stage, which is you are in the data system of the, of the country called Kenya. Mm -hmm. you, data? Data system. you never get a, jo a government job until those with your qualification who went through Kenyan system have gotten the job. You're not. If you went to an academy, and the, 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 this country has the capacity to build 
Alliance girls in Lombe. In every ward. Not county. No. Every ward. Every ward. We have the money. Let's make it a sub county. Mm -hmm. We start with the county, then in the next following two, three years, we go to sub county until we have enough of these schools. And they should be day schools, by the way. That's why they'll be cheaper. They'll be day schools <coughs> where children can access from their homes. Mm -hmm. We face out boarding schools completely. We have only day schools, quality. That's why. If you if you cannot find this education suitable for you, which is good, you are allowed because this is a capitalist society. You have your money. You want to do the best you can do for your children. But do not make your child come and compete for a job with a child who went through a public school. Just like health. Public health will be free. Of serious quality, but free. High quality, free health care okay. in this country. Free. Free is free. Free is F-R-E-E -E -E, double underlined with double uh, double underlining with ca and capital letters. Free. No rider attached to that. No, zero. Just free. You just walk in, you are a Kenyan. Sure. All you need to be is a, Ke a Kenyan. And get free. Now, I would hope at that point all these quackish clinics will disappear. Because there will be no need of going to them. Very well. Now, but if you have your money, you go to Nairobi Hospital. You go to Aga Khan Hospital. Pa our public hospitals will not be so far from Nairobi Hospital. But they will be down enough for you to want to go up. <laughs> this quackish thing, it's chemists, you what? There, there will be nothing. But it leaves room for those who have the money to go to Nairobi Hospital. Aga Khan Hospital. Gertrude. MP Shah. You see? And some of these beautiful missionary hospitals. Sure. The same with education. So we need to make our education quality education so that we will not stop mm -hmm. our children. So that we can stop our we not blame our children for going to Australia. True. Because parents must also be sufficiently advised. Sufficiently advised. And I want right. to advise them before they stop me in the streets and make noise. As a teacher, I can tell you for free. Mm -hmm. Because it's a fact. Watoto wakishuka ndege miyamoja kutoka Australia, Canada, where? One hundred of them. And they land. And then we put them uh, in a Kiwanja Nyao Stadium. And then we randomly pick a hundred. We, we pick the worst performing students from the University of Nairobi. The worst performing? The worst performing. Then we, sh we mix them in the Nyao Stadium. Our worst will teach those people. They know nothing. It's a fact. It's a fact. It is? They are not going for any education. These are facts. <laughs> you must, first of all, remove those I told you who go under special arrangements. If Camry is setting somebody for masters, they are not sending them just anywhere. You get it? Reputable institution. Yes. But you as a parent, your daughter has Grigo, Google, Jew, what, what, what? Daddy, I want to go to where? Ukraine. <laughs> and to do medicine. I mean, no, I'm asking parents who are blaming me. Just go to the nursing cans of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Nursing cans of? Kenya. Find out how many of those people cannot be admitted when they come back. Who did nursing? Go to medical, whatever they are call it. How many of those people cannot become doctors? KMPDU. Yeah, whatever, you know, PDU is a union. Mm -hmm. The other one, the one of Hainga, I think. Oh, sure, sure. How many of them cannot? Call Hainga. How many of them cannot qualify to become doctors? Go to the council of legal education. How many of these people cannot do, cannot be advocates in this Kenya country? When they come back with the degrees, you'll be shocked. They are in thousands. What they are in this country. Fun. They can't do. Go to the laboratory. All these professional bodies. Just go there. I'm asking parents. Just your, your son wants to do pharmacy ab abroad. Go to the pharmacy board. Go there. Pharmacy and poison. Yeah. Look if they have a qualification even to become a pharmacist after they come back. <laughs> you, are taking, you are taking your child to go and law in Australia law. And the Council for Legal Education will demand he has a B in English when he comes back. The guy had a D plus in English. So he will not be a lawyer. These are simple. Me, I'm helping parents. In the allure uh, of yonder is, I know, is there. We think Australia is heaven. In New Zealand, you know, Canada, UK. These are guys are just struggling like us. 
and their premier institutions mm -hmm. are for their people. Just like I tell girls, if you see a Mzungu walking in the streets of Nairobi, you meet him in a club. <laughs> you say, hey, mother, go aqua. He is a useless man. He was a watchman in, <laughs> in Auckland. <laughs> he has been serving all his life. Now he has been given pension. <laughs> Small young girls. A serious Mzungu will not be found in the streets. That is not an end to poverty. Oh, <laughs> Some of them go with them to Germany and say, whoa. That's why. These guys, when they go to Germany, in a year they have divorced. But the man doesn't even have a place to stay. <laughs> so I'm educating Kenyans and they want to blame me. Don't blame me. Well, if your son is wanting to go and do pharmacy <laughs> in Canada, go to the pharmacy board. Ask them, will this person be allowed to practice when they come back? They'll you know, tell you no. In the Institute of Time, it, knowledge is power. It, knowledge is power. And Thank that's you. it. Well, there you have it. That point by Haman Bon Manura takes us to the wrap of this convention talking matters about the allure of... Uh, uh, countries outside Kenya being the land of honey and milk, we see in many Kenyan, especially youth, going to look for greener pastures and better opportunities abroad. We've unpacked that conversation for you. We wait to see what uh, your response is from that conversation. Time now for our fun of the week. It is none other than Shaka Koro in Australia. Thank you, Shaka, from the same Australia yeah. we are talking about. Shaka Koro. Shaka Koro. <laughs> na ukuje na masomo mzuri, Shaka. Anasoma? Anasoma. Shaka ukuje na masomo mzuri. Na na hustle pia. Na una hustle pia. Oh. <laughs> Very well. And actually at this point, I want to invite you, if you are an owner of a business, an SME, MSME, or you have this uh, company that is doing so well, and you have a story to tell, a story of resilience or a story of success, do this. This is a business show. Actually, the biggest business show on digital media. The number down on your screen is the number that you can contact us and we'll definitely come and cover your business. If you have a story to tell that is worthy, to be listened to by other entrepreneurs or any other taxpayer. Do reach us uh, directly to us. That uh, That's the WhatsApp number. You can also call us through it and definitely I'll respond to it directly. And we shall be there even before you think of it. Until next time on Business Glide, I'm Richard Mwenja. Always a pleasure.